Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University. And welcome to Vlog 186. <gasps> well, how to manage gaslighting. Wow, this request comes from Hayley. Hello, Hayley. And this is why it's such a joy and a privilege to do these vlogs because I would never have thought of this topic. Hayley's request was magnificent and I loved doing the research for this one. This was brilliant. So we're going to look at gaslighting well uh, and how it's defined and how it operates both inside and outside the university. And the literature is very rich, very disturbing and very powerful. So well, let's do this. Hayley, you rock. So let's start with gaslighting, the definition. So gaslighting is the manipulation of an individual or a group to such an extent that the individual starts to question their credibility, their credibility, and indeed at the end of it, their sanity. Gaslighting uses lying, denial, contradiction, manipulation, all the good stuff to make the victim of gaslighting doubt themselves in their own eyes and also doubt and question the credibility amongst other people as well. So it's a full nightmare. Now, why I love this term is it has a popular cultural etymology. You know, a lot of these vlogs, the definition comes from some guy in ancient Greece, right? Well, this one doesn't. This has popular cultural etymology and it's derived from the 19... 38 play Gaslight that went on to become Hollywood films in 1940 and again in 1944 and it's the 1944 one that is the most popular and resonant when you think about Gaslight. The film was directed by George Kakur starring the fabulous Ingrid Bergman. Oh wow and she was so beautiful at this point in and around Casablanca for those of you that know that period and Charles Boyer. What an amazing film I recommend it to you. Gaslight. The film narrative saw the wife being manipulated by her husband. So she continually asked him, you know, am I thinking this? Am I feeling this? And he would undermine her, question her. So she started to question herself. So the gaslight from the title, how brilliant is this? The gaslight from the title describes the bit of the narrative whereby the husband continually reduced the lighting in the house, the gas lighting in the house. So it got darker and darker and darker. And when the wife questioned, is the house becoming a bit dark, doll? Is something happening? Uh, he would say, absolutely not. You're just mad. What's going on here? So of course, by the end of it, <laughs> the house was pretty well dark and she was going like, is this dark, eh? And he would like, don't be so ridiculous. So of course, it's the pathway to madness. So how great is this? Absolutely fabulous. Wow. So gaslighting as a verb has been used since the 1960s, emerged quite frequently in the management literature and in psychology. So what it describes generically is how someone's perception of reality is manipulated. Sociopaths, <laughs> always a fabulous group, and narcissists, we love those, uh, use gaslighting all the time. And they use it to both abuse and undermine their victims. They are really convincing liars, and because of that, they convince the person that they're manipulating that actually they're telling the truth. Oh, this is going well. So we see this stuff most frequently in physically abusive relationships. These are the most obvious relationships where we see it uh, because, you know, violence is occurring and the perpetrator of that violence says, well, this is not violence, uh, this is just tough love. Yeah, baby, good stuff. So the outcome of gaslighting is absolutely shocking because the victim starts to second guess every single choice and decision that they make. They lose confidence, they lose self-esteem, and they start to question their very sanity. There are a lot of signs of gaslighting and, and some of them involve the use and the abuse of information. So it's the withholding of information from the victim, the countering of that information to move into the reality of the, of the person that's doing it, the abuser's perspective. It's also discounting information, and that's the most frequent. So someone says, look, is this happening? No, it's not happening, you're simply mad. So the discounting of information. But also verbal abuse, particularly manifesting in jokes at the victim's expense, right? Uh, blocking and diverting the victim's attention from outside of the relationship. That's, of course, very common 
in abusive marriages and relationships. So it becomes an intense one-on-one -on -one relationship and the family of the victim is excluded from their life. So all sorts of options and alternative information sources are blocked. There's also the trivialization of the worth of the victim and undermining of the victim through a weakening of their thought processes. So they start to question and doubt themselves. So Kate Abramson, uh, one of the truly great scholars of gaslighting, shows how this process operates and how it leads to clinical depression. My goodness me. And by the way, you probably felt a bit uncomfortable when I used the word victim. And I've used it a lot so far in this vlog. And look, that word makes me pretty uncomfortable too. But in this circumstance, I have used it because here is a, a normal, fine, cool person, a person doing well. And by the behavior of another person, they become unwell. So I think that's probably the definition of a victim. So this is an overt and intentional strategy for manipulation. And politics is, of course, based on it. So this is important. This is an important issue for the planet. But by the way, let's talk about that thing over there. So that's what politics is based on. And Anderson Cooper's nightly news roundup on CNN has that special series called We'll Leave the Gaslight On, <laughs> which I love. So that's talking about the lies perpetuated by politicians. So this is actually important, but let's not talk about that. Let's talk about this little issue over there like it's actually relevant. And of course, social media uses this stuff all the time, creating alternative realities, alternative narratives. So gaslighting is seen in intimate relationships, but it's also seen in the workplace. And in the workplace, what happens is staff in power continually do this drip, 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 drip that makes colleagues question themselves, question their choices, question their decisions. In the contemporary workplace, you know, you've got to back yourself a bit, right? And of course, what's happening at the moment is these drip, 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 drip interventions are stopping people actually getting on with their job and you can see what happens. So to gaslight is now a cliche to describe how Others manipulate people to deny the facts, deny the context of what is occurring, and also to deny the feelings of the victim. So when the perpetrator of gaslighting holds power, it can be incredibly destructive and really dangerous. So you can see perhaps why we're doing this vlog on supervisory relationships and also thinking particularly about how gaslighting operates in universities. And I think that was the surprise to me when I was doing this great research in the literature, is actually there's a very strong slice of that literature about how gaslighting operates in universities. And that was a surprise to me. So now let's look at how we can spot the techniques of gaslighting and recognize how and when it appears in our universities. So gaslighting is a technique that is used in already existing relationships. And that's important. A trust relationship has to already exist before gaslighting can occur. If that trust relationship doesn't exist, you know, some random starts to doubt you and you go, well, good luck with that and who the hell are you again, right? So it's gotta be a trust relationship and it's gotta be a relationship where there's a power differential and one person is incredibly important to the other so that the fear of losing them means that your behavior starts to change and you become a little bit desperate to hold their affection and or attention. You know you are experiencing gaslighting, and this might be important for people watching this today, you know you're experiencing it if your emotions are being discredited. So feelings and emotions matter here. So if you express, look, this is really important to me and I'm upset about it, and someone goes, well, that doesn't matter, yeah, it does because you're feeling it. Also, your view of reality is undermined. So I believe this is happening. No, it's not. You're not seeing this clearly, right? Uh, you're not feeling listened to. So you're caring for somebody else and listening to them and understanding their world. And they never listen to you or even desire to understand what's going on in your life. Yep. Uh, and also you're told you're imagining 
what is actually your reality. So a lot of phrases are used in gaslighting. So I was only joking, you're just paranoid, wow, you're crazy. Uh, you start to feel really insecure as well, or you know, you, you're making this stuff up. You know, these sort of phrases, you're making this stuff up. Wow, you're overreacting, or wow, this is not a big deal. Where's this coming from? Wow, you're hysterical, or you are so ungrateful. All those sorts of phrases are used. So from the victim's perspective, what then happens when these phrases endlessly go on? You're crazy, you're too sensitive, wow, you're hysterical, is that the victim starts to believe it. So they, they start to ask the question like, wow, am I too sensitive? Am I going crazy? You find that you're always apologizing, you're unhappy a lot of the time, and you don't know why. You make excuses for the gaslighter's behavior. So if anyone says, look, he doesn't treat you or she doesn't treat you too good, you're oh, he or she, they love me so much. They're caring for me, they're protecting me, right? And most importantly, you know something is wrong, but you just can't quite put your finger on it, yeah? You have trouble making simple decisions. So you get to the point where you are emotionally, intellectually, socially paralyzed, yep? So hopefully you can see why gaslighting is such a problem in the workplace and in academic life in particular, and why in supervision, <laughs> we're having this vlog. Because what happens is students, all students, undergraduates, graduate students, but also junior academics are incredibly vulnerable to gaslighting because the power differential is so great and we're in an environment of temporary short-term contracts. Also the politics of publishing, the politics of authorships, let alone the, the politics of grant and funding, very, very messy. Academic life these days is deeply ambitious, deeply ruthless and competitive. This is a nasty space. We can pretty this up, but this is nasty. It is no wonder, I think, that Haley did request this vlog because it's so easy to create doubt in a PhD student. Trust me, as a supervisor, it's really easy to, to destroy a student's life. We have to make a decision not to destroy a student's life because you are vulnerable, you are questioning yourself, you're questioning your findings, you're questioning your abilities, you're questioning your writing capacity. And this is where it gets quite complicated about how we as staff, you as students, how we differentiate between gaslighting and feedback. So I spent a lot of time thinking through how we differentiate this. So this is important for a lot of you that are going, oh gee, my supervisor was really ruthless with feedback. You know, am I, am I confronting gaslighting? Well, I think not. And let me explain the difference. Feedback is about the research, the research. Gaslighting is personal. It's about the researcher. So the moment that a commentary about the PhD, the research, spills into personal behavior, then that's when gaslighting is happening. It chips away at your confidence. But what I did want to say and be very clear in this vlog is team gas, <laughs> gaslighting, feedback is legitimate. Okay, this is important. So your supervisor has to offer you feedback. And you've often heard me say, and I've had students where this has occurred, week after week, I offer them the same feedback. Please change this, please change this, please change this. And I've done that for three years. And we get to the point where we're doing the 10 drafts. And I say to the student, I've asked you to change this for three years. I'm not reading the next draft until you make this correction. Now that's feedback and it's robust feedback and I'm doing it because if you submit the thesis with that error in it, it will fail, right? But that is feedback, it's robust, but it's feedback, okay? That's not gaslighting, so be understanding of the difference. But the moment that feedback moves into a discussion of your behavior, so your appearance, your relationships, your family, your friends, then it becomes, you've guessed it, gaslighting. 
we see a lot of behaviour in universities to undermine a student or a colleague's confidence. That's very, very common. And gaslighting is almost a managerial technique in universities at the moment because people are so competitive that they gain confidence by pushing other people down. And to be frank with you, I see that every hour of every day at a university. This is normative. It's a tragedy, but it's normative. And I'll give you a great example that, that's happened to me. I always try and use an example for me because it's mine to tell, that made me laugh like a banshee. Uh, so what, what happened is a very, very senior person, a woman, a professor, uh, wrote to me after I was awarded the Order of Australia Medal earlier this year, which was a great privilege and I feel uh, very blessed to have had that experience. But so I'd, I'd won the Order of Australia Medal and that's great, but this woman clearly had a problem with me getting that. And she didn't know where to put that, whatever she was feeling. You know, if you're feeling jealousy or anger or concern at somebody else's success, oh my God, Eddie, at someone else's success, you know what? Go do some yoga. <laughs> have a nice walk, have a couple of Chardonnays, just self-manage. But no, this woman, <laughs> as frequently happens after my success occurred, she wrote me an email. And I will quote the email where she said, quote, congratulations on your Order of Australia medal. I'm not sure how or why you got it, but you do add a bit of colour to the university. <laughs> End of quote. I laughed. Oh, did I laugh. I still laugh. Laughing, 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 laughing. Now, of course, that's an attempt at gaslighting. Good luck with that. Uh, that doesn't work too well with somebody like me because she's assuming that I care what she thinks and like I really, really don't. So gaslighting fails at that point because like, I'm a senior academic. I'm very comfortable and confident in who I am and what some random professor in Adelaide thinks of me is absolutely irrelevant to my well-being. But obviously, therefore, I, I replied to that email, as I often do, and I replied to that email with, quote, thank you so much for your kind words. You're a wonderful colleague. <laughs> now, I laughed a lot, and as you can see, I still laugh a lot. I think it's really funny. But remember, I think it's funny because I'm a very senior and very experienced woman, and I'm very confident in who I am. I don't require the opinion of someone else to validate who I am. Right? But think about the drip, 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 drip effect of somebody like that doing it with a student, okay? So let me repeat some of the phrases I've heard from supervisors over the years. And these have happened in meetings and I've written them down. And this has been said to students, you are not as good as you think you are. I, I can't even count the number of times a supervisor has said that to a student. You're not as good as you think you are, wow. Uh, you really didn't do the research that was in that article. You're not a very good scientist, and I had to repeat the experiment. Okay, uh, you're not really liked by your peers. You're really unpopular in the lab. You'll never get an article published without me because you don't write very well. Or, I love this one, you're really slow. Gee, you're working slowly. I I'm not sure you're ever gonna finish a PhD. Now think about it, this stuff emerges day after day after day, confusing feedback about research with commentary on a person, yeah? Now look, it can happen the other way. A student can enact gaslighting on a supervisor, but it is relatively rare, and I'll tell you how it happens. It happens if the supervisor or advisor makes the mistake of sharing personal information with the student or blurring those boundaries, those professional boundaries, so the boundaries get confused. So the supervisor has to open the gate to the personal matters first before a student can commence gaslighting. So the way to manage gaslighting, okay, I always try and do positive things at the end of these vlogs. How are you gonna do this? The way to manage gaslighting is to get the hell out of that relationship. Make a decision that you do not require anybody else to validate your reality. Be self-reliant, be confident. That's how you get out of it. But like when you're in the middle of it, the whole point about gaslighting is you start to get confused. So how do you move from the gaslighting, oh look, I'm not worthy, to getting out of the situation? Well, the key is to identify the problem recognize what is happening between you and your supervisor or your boss 
or your partner or your friends or your family member and then what you've got to do is sort out the truth from the distortion and the literature recommends that you write through this that actually the journaling of what is occurring creates the consciousness of the behavior so what the journaling allows you to do is take a clear-headed engagement and interpretation of the situation right note how the reality is being skewed towards this person's view and look at how your view of the world is continually being denied look at the power structure in the relationship and recognize that you are continually presenting a view that is being distorted and denied recognize the feelings that you have and validate those feelings and what you then need to do and this is an important technique this once you've got that journal together and you know what's occurring then go to a family member or a friend remember the point of gaslighting is you're isolated yep then go to a family member or a friend and explain the situation to them and get their alternative view on it so that will validate your position and also give yourself the benefit of the doubt show compassion to yourself and get yourself out of this situation so the specific strategies at the start of supervision to stop any of this occurring there are strategies right at the start to stop this with supervision and the first is I think to lose use the Flinders University supervisory charter which lists the rights and responsibilities of students and supervisors bring that to meeting number one get that nice and clear get that signed up bang thanks for playing so what that does is it says this is the nature of our relationship it sets up the borders the boundaries the limits and the parameters and put them in writing right from the start secondly second strategy do not put all your eggs in one basket of a supervisor don't make them a savior or a messiah or the one use them to enable your research certainly but receive personal and professional feedback from a diversity of sources and also this is an important one reorganize the relationship at the first sign of trouble so if your supervisor says something odd or weird right at the end of the meeting so something happens a weird phrase comes in yeah then at the end of the meeting conclude the meeting go back to your office or back home and write an email to that person quoting that phrase with a please explain right so say they said look I don't think you can do this go home write an email so it's dated and timed and logged uh, why did you say that I can't do it that I'm, I'm not bright enough or that you, you you're doubting me so put that phrase in could you please explain why you said that and if they come back I didn't say that you go well yes you did so please explain it and if they come back with oh look I'm I'm really sorry I'm tired or you know I'm working very hard or I'm marking that's fine log that response file it okay so you've you've created a new boundary around their behavior you've logged it with consciousness and continually correct it okay so gaslighting is used in academic life particularly around authorship uh, this is really a problem I think so what happens is a student particularly or an early career academic doesn't have a lot of power they say look that's my work in that article I did that that's my work and they go oh look no 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 um, you did some some background material on that that's that's actually our research that's actually our stuff yeah no uh, therefore what you need to do and this is so important team the world has changed so anyone saying oh look, this is how authorship has already existed I don't care authorship policy has changed in the last two years so what you need to do is every single draft of every single piece of work that you do tracked changes on date the draft make the changes keep it keep every single draft so if someone says oh look you really didn't do that work present the drafts they go yeah I did explain that to me yeah so my final strategy for PhD students is not to overshare with your supervisor please do keep the relationship professional don't overshare deep personal issues because they may be used against you so think about a supervisor saying and again I have heard this 
where they say, oh, Julie, you aren't really ready for that conference presentation. You're working through those mental health concerns. So, you know, how about we work through that and, and then you do the conference presentation. So recognize that any personal weakness is used by a gaslighter. So keep everything clear, everything professional, and have a diversity of relationships around you. Do not pick up your supervisor's dry cleaning. Do not get your supervisor lunch. Full stop. Trust yourself, build a multiplicity of relationships with diverse people, and treat the PhD as a job, as a degree, not as the saturated core of your identity. And most importantly, focus on finishing that thesis. One of the most common strategies that a supervisor uses when gaslighting a student, and this is through the literature that shocked the hell out of me, but is a supervisor continually telling a student that they're not ready to submit. Okay, and the reason they're doing that is so they can squeeze out a few more papers from you and a few more experiments from the PhD student as free labour. And as I said to you, after I arrived back in Australia from the UK, I was in a meeting, and I've used this in a vlog before, and it, it tortured me and it still does. I was sitting in a meeting with very senior staff and PhD students were described as slaves. And that was bad enough, so slaves. But then to make matters worse, those senior staff laughed when a PhD student was described as a slave. And as I always say, when people tell you the truth about themselves, believe them, believe them. So it is in your interest to get into a PhD program and get out of a PhD program as quickly as possible. Monitor what is happening in your academic life. Talk to professional colleagues, talk to social workers, talk to health professionals to get those alternative views. And remember, do not put up with ever a supervisor calling you stupid. Nobody is stupid. Nobody, if you breathe, you are not stupid. The word stupid should never be used. Ignorant can be used, yeah? You need to read more, that's cool. Uh, but, but nobody is stupid. Your supervisor, say, doesn't like it when you talk to other academics. <laughs> and I hear that a lot, by the way, from, from wonderful students around the world where their supervisor or advisor has said to them, look, don't talk to Tara. You know, don't, that's an example of gaslighting. Don't talk to me. Why? Am I like Satan? Uh, you can talk to me. Talk to me whenever you like. You know, I'm just some five foot two bird. Talk to me whenever you like. Disagree with what I say. That's cool. But feel free to talk to me. You know, <laughs> uh, and say your supervisor continually questions whether or not the project will succeed. Your supervisor also checks how you're spending your working day and offers commentary about how you're using your free time not their business. Your supervisor becomes aggressive when you offer independent views on data or your supervisor doesn't like collaborations with other people. Your supervisor says if you do anything without them, you will fail. Your supervisor never admits that they're wrong. We're wrong a lot. <laughs> your supervisor questions your judgment about what is good for your career. <laughs> These happen a lot. Uh, your supervisor offers a commentary about your body uh, your supervisor does not validate discrimination that is occurring in some form. Or my personal favourite, your supervisor describes you as high maintenance. Or he or she is a high maintenance student. Right. Now, I try and keep students and supervisors together. That's my job. But when gaslighting happens, I will separate a supervisor and a student because it's going to threaten your personal and professional standing. You will be isolated, overworked and destabilised. You are being set up to fail here. Now, universities are now being recognised in the literature as a place where gaslighting happens. And we see it particularly against junior academics, PhD students and women. And you know, so I haven't really done the gender thing here because I do believe this is about power, not gender. It just so happens that in a patriarchy, most of the positions of power are operated by men. But actually, gaslighting is a technique about power. So what do we do? Well, you know what? 
stand up for yourself. Stand in your reality with both pride and confidence. And if you do that, gaslighters can't touch you. And together, all of us can create a change in this system. I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.